Tune into this week's episode on the DevOps Lab. We're finishing off our series, Identity for Developers, and we're going to talk about a brand new product, Workload Identity Federation. So tune in and check this out. Welcome back to the DevOps Lab, and we have our sixth and unfortunately final episode, but we have Christos back again. Yes, they let me through the door. Again, again for again. six episodes here in the DevOps Lab, back amazing. Back. Yeah. All right, so today we're going to talk about workload federated identity. Yes, my favorite topic. And this is exciting because it's new. New. And pretty new. it's pretty cool, and it solves a lot of problems. So let's talk, we talked about in episode one, so mm. for all of you out there watching, if you saw episode one, we talked about workload federated identity, we talked about service principles and all the problems with that. So let's have a quick rehash of sure. what workload federated identity is, other than being a mouthful. What does it do, why is it important, and why do we need it? It is a mouthful, but it solves a lot of problems, especially for people that want to run workloads outside of Azure. If you're inside of Azure, mass identities, and maybe Azure Arc can cover quite a few scenarios, but unfortunately there are a lot of things like Kubernetes is running on-prem that you need to secure and access resources against Azure. Mm -hmm. And that can happen because you're lacking that built-in uh, integration. Okay. Now, workload federated identities allow you to get an identity or an authenticated token that you can use to speak to Azure Active Resources and Azure Resources or third-party apps that are secure with Azure Active Directory. In effect, what happens is the, your solution already has an identity provider that they can authenticate, mm -hmm. like GitHub, mm -hmm. and then we exchange tokens, and you get an Azure Active Directory token that you can use against your Azure resources. And, and they don't that. expire, unlike a service principle. And they don't expire. Awesome. Yes. So cool. So show us. How does it work? Uh, it's, uh, right now, it's a little bit crude because it's still mm -hmm. preview days. Yep. So if you are going to use it, you have to use either um, a CLI tool that does all the steps for you, and you know, John Gallant has done a fantastic job in collecting all of them and putting them into a script file. But uh, the wizard experience inside Azure Active Directory is a lot easier to go with. Mm -hmm. And right now, I have a, a project that we used previously to do secretless.net. Um, and it has um, Azure Active Directory federated identities against the main branch. But if I try to run my, my .NET 7 branch, it doesn't work. It's going to fail because it doesn't know how to speak to Azure Active Directory. So in order for us to do that, we can jump back into our Azure Active Directory, and I do have an app registration. You need to have an app registration for this. And under Certificates and Secrets, there is a federated credential. Okay. So here you establish the relationship between GitHub and your Azure Active Directory. I have one against my main branch, so I'm going to create another credential for my, um, my .NET 7 branch. The nice thing is, as I said, is because it is a wizard, it guides you through the experience. It says, which scenario do you want to use? I want to use a GitHub action. It will try to create some things automatically, but we want to edit a few things, uh, like the organization, which is my tenant. And then I need a repository name, which I cannot remember, so I need to copy it. But it's really cool that you can use that against your branch. So you can set up branching Correct. policies, protect yes. your main branch, and protect some of your developer and your feature branches. Correct. Very and these cool. will be different. You can have different credentials depending on which um, branch you're on. So they mm -hmm. can have different permissions to Azure. So maybe uh, one credential allows you to deploy to a dev environment only, mm -hmm. but the other one cannot deploy anywhere because it doesn't have an associated federated identity. Okay. And then I need to select the branch. Uh, you can also do it against environments and against tags as well. And then my branch is net 7.0. And you'll notice that down the subject identifier has changed. Uh, this is what we use to validate uh, where the token is coming from mm -hmm. and whether it's a valid token. And then we just need to give it a name. So here we can say uh, workload federated identity, OIDC, net 7.0, just for me to be able to discern what's happening here and then add it. Okay. Now, because I have already set up my uh, GitHub without identity, it's already in the settings. All I have to do is just run this workflow and it should work. And for that to happen, I need to change back into my net seven, do a commit because that's the way I run it these days, and then let it run. DevOps demo. And then commit this straight 
in production. Oh, risque. 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 Well, I'm using CI CD, so it's not right click uh, publish, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then our action should kick in because I updated the readme file. And here, if we expand the running job, it hasn't kicked in yet, we'll see there's an OIDC authentication component. Mm -hmm. So instead of using a service principal credentials, all we use is the tenant ID, the client ID, and the subscription ID. So we don't have to worry about things expiring. We don't have to worry about exposing that secret, especially exactly. if someone set that up and nobody knows what that secret is in exactly. the repo. Exactly. Awesome. And as I said, it's early days for workload failure mm -hmm. identities. I'm pretty sure that we'll be adding a lot more integration with third-party identity providers and make it make everyone's life a lot easier. As you can see, the job has already kicked in. It, be, it got picked up by the first available runner. And the important bit here is that you see an Open ID Connect authentication. Mm -hmm. So instead of using hard-coded credentials for service principles, which is never nice, we only use Open ID Connect to authenticate against Azure. And you'll see that because this uh, account also had access to our key vault, everything else ran as successfully. Same thing, key vault, secrets, no more. Thank you for showing us that today. Workload federated identity solves a lot of problems. We don't have to worry about our service principles expiring. We've also put all our secrets into Azure Key Vault. We've deployed things end to end with CI CD. We even had some branch protection in that demo. Yeah. That was really cool. So thank you so much for doing this whole series with us because identity for developers is super critical. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Hey, anytime. So thank you for everyone out there for joining us. We have six episodes in this series. Check them all out. We cover everything from infrastructure as code to what is identity, especially for developers. And then we end it today with workload federated identity. We'll put all the links in the show notes for you to check everything out. And thank you everyone for joining in today at the DevOps Lab.